We are here in Normandy, France, getting ready to dive off the World War II invasion beaches. Our objective today is a most unusual wreck. Not a ship, but an M4 Sherman tank. A secret weapon is intended to eliminate those German bunkers. Special tanks, modified to swim. But nearly all of them sink. Only a handful make it ashore. I'm going to dive the waters off these D-Day beaches and find out what happened to those swimming tanks. To find out more about those tanks, I've come to meet a guy who's been diving here for years. Bertrand Sibos. When did you first become aware that there was a tremendous amount of wreckage out there from D-Day? It was something like 15 years ago, a fisherman was fishing there and lose his net in something. And when I dove on it, I found the tanks. They were the Sherman tanks? For sure. But we must know as well, if we go diving on tanks, there is some, some shells and explosive in tanks. So we have to take very much care. The wrecks we're searching for, tanks. We're going to dive off Omaha Beach and search for those lost tanks. We try and notice there's a tank down there. But what we still don't know is whether or not it's a duplex drive tank. Bertrand knows there's tanks out there. We're just not sure if any are DDs. What we're looking at is some schematic drawings for the duplex drive or the DD tank. And the features on here that would uh, indicate to us that it's a duplex drive are the canvas skirt. In addition to that, the most important thing is the propellers on the stern. It's pretty exciting for me. Yeah. I know you're yeah. a local. Uh, Bertrand lives here, but for me, coming all the way from the United States, uh, um, this is a lot of fun. First, we have to locate the wreck. At less than 30 feet long, a Sherman tank is a tough target for sonar. Uh, this small target here is uh, supposed to be a Sherman tank, you know. We don't know yet if it's a duplex drive. Sure. So we must dive and have a look, you know. Now the visibility doesn't look all that great from the surface, what do you think? You know, it's going to be maybe less than one meter. So uh, there's a little bit of a challenge to get us down there, but uh, we like that kind of thing. Yes. We'll make it happen, right? Yeah. For sure. Thank you, John. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, pal? Hey, John. Yes, sir. We must be very careful on the bottom because uh, you know, the vis is not good at all, so... Preserve the visibility as best we can. Yes. Gotcha. Big history here, big history. Yeah, there is history everywhere lying on the bottom, so we might find today a part of this history. I'll see you on the line. With barely two meters of visibility, it's like diving in pea soup. the shipwrecks I usually dive, this one is tiny. The breach of the gun practically fills the turret.
crammed with 75 millimeter ammo. There's barely room in the turret for the commander on the left, the gunner on the right. Below and in front of the turret, the driver's station. The machine gun. located a sunken tank, but it's not a VD. Since we're here, we'll explore it anyway. We know that after the war, the American military retrieved all human remains from these wrecks. So it's okay to take a look inside. I'll tell you what, it's pretty tight in here. About the only thing I can see is the breach of the 75 millimeter main gun. Originally, there was a sheet metal enclosure that protected the crew from the gun's recoil. Now, it's rotted away. Definitely a Sherman tank. Of course, we're off the Normandy coast, so I'm sure it was at the very least part of the Normandy invasion. But uh, what that means is we'll just have to try again. We're trying. Yeah. Thanks, brother. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. <laughs> did you notice that he did all the time with a little crab on the shoulder? <laughs> yeah, he's crawling around <laughs> in your back the whole time. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. But I'll tell you what, um, I wouldn't have wanted to have been one of the, the tankers back in 1944, crammed inside that, that turret there. On our next dive, our search for a duplex drive Sherman continues. We're here in Normandy, France, planning our second dive to search for a duplex drive tank. On our first dive, we located a Sherman tank, but it wasn't a DD. Now Bertrand wants to shift our search to a different area. That's it. There is one tank right to the shore, the Omaha Beach. To avoid dangerous currents, we'll have to dive at slack tide. And that means starting out before dawn. So far, conditions seem promising. We've got reasonably good weather. It's uh, January, it's a little nippy out, but still, uh, um, we've got our hands full today. So the sea seems to be very good here today, so I hope we have very good visibility here. First step is finding the wreck. We're just off the coast of Normandy, and right now we're doing our search pattern, trying to find the uh, tanks. Well, we got it. Bertrand's located a sonar target. It's not deep, but the current here is definitely going to be an issue. 
we are actually at spring tide, so we've got certainly more than two or three knots of current. So that means the difference between high water and low water in this yeah. area is yeah. about 20 feet. That's quite a bit. Yeah. And there's a reason we have to dive at slack tide. Bertrand is pretty sure the sonar target below us is a tank. But we want to find out if it's one of the secret duplex drives. There's only one way to do that. That's to get in the water. Maybe this wreck will finally be a real duplex drive tank. 60 years later, in the light of day, we can only imagine how it felt. We're in a small boat, it's relatively calm yeah. day out, and we're bobbing around. You can imagine going on shore on those tanks as the weather, you know, is getting a bit stronger and rougher and rougher. Those things had almost no freeboard, and uh, once water came over the skirt, compromised the integrity of the interior of the tank. They started becoming more and more negatively buoyant with each wave. It wouldn't take much to send them to the bottom, right? For sure. On our next dive, we resume our search for a lost DD tank. It's our final dive off the Normandy invasion beaches. Our last chance to find a real duplex drive Sherman tank. Most of the other tank wrecks are half buried in sand. But this time, in about 60 feet of water, we're in luck. Then, Bertrand spots something. Did you see those rubbish things everywhere? Thank you, Bertrand. Pieces of black rubber. Remnants of the inflatable pillars that raised the canvas skirt. And the metal ribs that kept it rigid. Here's one of the gas cylinders. They were used to inflate the rubber pillars. Now I drop down to the back end. The duplex drive itself. At first, all I can see is the mechanism. This secret weapon still sits, frozen in time, barely a mile from the battlefield it never reached. We can see the propeller. One of the propellers was exposed on the stern. Right. That's right, great right, job. So why is it so many DD tanks sink off Omaha, the one place they're needed most? It's clear the tanks are swamped by rough seas. But if weather is the problem, why don't just as many DDs sink at the other beaches? We're here on Juneau Beach. Now here, both the Canadians and the British were successful at bringing their duplex tanks ashore. Now, Bertrand, 
Is it possible that you could have a completely different sea state between here at Juneau and, say, Omaha Beach? Yes, John, you're right, you know, because right over Omaha Beach, it's always rougher over there than here, especially, especially with this terrible northeast wind.